In this video, I'm going to write a function in C that's going to be able to find the substring of a string given a starting index and a length. So an example of where this might come up would be something like this. Let's say we've got a product code. And we know that product codes have a particular format where the first three characters are maybe the part number. And these characters here are maybe the manufacturer ID. And maybe these numbers here are the supplier ID. And we know exactly which portions of the string contain information that we care about. And so what we'd like to do is pull out certain substrings of this larger string. So let's write a function to do this. We'll say here void substring car star orig will be the original string car star sub str will be the substring int index will be the starting index of the substring and int length will be the length of the substring. So we'll provide a definition of the function down here. And the way it's going to work is that we're going to copy the characters from the original string into the substring, starting at the index provided for length many characters. So we'll make a loop to do this. We'll say here int i is equal to zero. And while i is less than length, we're going to keep copying. And we'll increment i by one each time. And then the actual copy step is going to look like this. We'll say substring at i is equal to the original string at index plus i. And the reason why we have to say index plus i is that we need to shift over the position that we're copying from in the original string by the index provided to make sure we're copying that portion of the string. So for example, this character here starts at index four in the original string. And if we wanted to copy these three characters, we'd be calling the function here substring with four as the argument for index and three as the argument for length. And so when we copy from the original string, we need to kind of shift over by that many characters, in this case four, to start copying from here. So that's what that's about. Now, when we're done copying the characters into the substring character array, to make it a proper string, we have to end it with a null terminator. So we'll do that as a last step. We'll say substring at length is equal to slash zero to end it with the null terminator character that signifies the end of a string. We also want to handle two potential error cases. One is that the index provided would actually go beyond the length of the original string. We just can't copy characters that don't exist. So we want to handle that in a graceful way and maybe return a empty substring. The other thing we want to guard against is maybe the index starts within the original string, but the length would take us beyond the original string. If that's the case, we want to return the portion of the string from the index until the end of the string. So let's try that as well. I'm going to include string.h because this library has a function called strlen that finds the length of a string. We can use that to check whether the index is going to go beyond the length of the string. So we'll say here, if index is greater than or equal to the string length of the original string, we really can't do anything. So we'll say here, substring at zero is equal to the null terminator. We'll send back an empty string and we'll return. So this is a void function. It has no actual return value, but we can return no value and this will actually terminate the execution of the function. So the other thing we want to do is just return the portion of the string that we can if the length would take us beyond the length of the original string. So that's going to look like this. We'll say while i is less than length and the original string at index plus i does not equal the null terminator. So, so long as i is less than length, keep copying. But also, we're going to check that we haven't reached the end of the original string. If we have, we're also going to stop this loop. And we'll just end the substring there, because we can at least return that portion of the string. So let's actually test this function out now. I'm going to make some character arrays here to store the different parts of the string that we mentioned. So we'll store the part number, the manufacturer ID, and the supplier ID. We'll say here car part number four, car manufacturer ID 
four, and then car supplier ID five. And then we'll get those portions of the string using our new substring function. So to get the part number, we're gonna want the substring from index zero for a length of three characters. So we'll call the function like that. We'll say substring product code part number and then start at index zero and we want a length of three characters copied into our substring. We'll do a similar thing for the manufacturer ID. We'll say here substring product code manufacturer ID but this time we'll say four and three. That's because the manufacturer ID starts at index four and then goes for a length of three characters. And then finally, to get the substring of the supplier ID, we'll say here substring product code supplier ID. And then here we'll say index 14 and a length of four characters because this is index 14 and we want to get a substring of four characters in length. So let's see if this worked by printing out the part number, manufacturer ID, and supplier ID. So we'll say here printf part percent s slash n, and we'll put the part number, printf manufacturer percent s, and we'll put the manufacturer ID, and then printf supplier ID, and then we'll have percent s slash n and we'll output the supplier ID. So let's give this a shot now. I'll save this and I'll try to run it and we'll see if we get the right portions of the string extracted. And you can see we get a part number of 100, manufacturer ID of 440, and supplier ID of 3434. And so we've successfully created the substrings. Next, we should probably test the error handling cases that we had, where for example, the index given went beyond the length of the original string or the case where the index plus the length given would take us beyond the length of the original string. So we'll try those. We'll say here car error 150 and car error 250, just so we can check the results of our error handling code. And now we'll call substring like this. We'll say substring product code error one, but we'll give a ridiculous index here. We'll say 200 and then maybe five characters. So index 200 would take us way beyond the length of this original string. So we expect error one to be an empty string in this case. We could test that out. We could say printf error one percent s slash n, and we could output error one. And if we compile this and give it a try, we see that we get a blank string in the case of error one, which we're gonna say is better than the program crashing. Next, let's try the situation where the index plus the length given would take us beyond the end of the string here. In that case, what we expect is everything from the index onward to be copied into the substring. So here, for example, if we said index 14 and I gave a length of 100, that would take us way beyond the length of this string here. But we would expect that our substring would contain these characters up until the end of the string. So let's give that a try. We'll say here, substring product code error two, and we'll say 14. And this time we'll say maybe a hundred. And then we'll print F error two. So we'll say error two percent S slash N error two. And we run this, we're gonna get everything from the original string from index 14 onwards. And so we've written a function in C that can find a substring of a string, including some error handling. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.